On this, the December 12th, 2023 edition of What's Going On With Shipping, Yemen has hit a tanker in the Red Sea. I'm your host, Sal Mercogliano. Welcome to today's episode. If you're a follower of What's Going On With Shipping, you know we have been following the attacks against commercial shipping that have been ongoing by the Houthi in Yemen. This is in response to Israel's invasion of Gaza, which in turn is a response of Hamas's attack out of Gaza on Israel. The Houthi have announced a blockade of all ships heading up to Israel. They are therefore trying to cut off the passage of vessels into the Red Sea heading up to the Gulf of Suez. Now we have this most recent attack against a commercial ship heading up into the Mediterranean. We're going to look at this attack. We're going to look at the background, what's going on with the ship right now, talk a little bit about the background of the incident, and then discuss what this means for global shipping. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. So this is a story over in GCAP, Norwegian flagged tanker hit by missile fired from Yemen. A Norwegian flagged chemical tanker has been hit by an anti-ship missile in international waters uh, near the Babdal Mandab off the coast of Yemen. U.S. Central Command, which has jurisdiction for U.S. military affairs in and around this region, reported the attack on the motor tanker Stradina at around 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on December 11. Officials have determined the ship was struck by an anti-ship cruise missile. We don't know what type of missile this is. Probably a sea skimming type missile. They specifically did not identify it as a ballistic missile. And this was launched from Houthi controlled areas of Yemen while passing through the Bab el Mandeb. This is the motor tanker Stradina on marine traffic. We're going to be using marine traffic here to really track this vessel and witness the attack. So the vessel was heading from Malaysia through the Suez Canal. We know it was heading to Venice, Italy. Uh, the, the cargo was initially reported uh, to be uh, oil, uh, initially vegetable oil, later on palm oil. But now what we're hearing is this is an additive oil that was going to be used up in a refinery in Venice. Uh, Stradina herself is no longer showing up on AIS. They have turned it off as of 16 hours ago. Uh, the ship is not a large ship. It's a, it is a general purpose tanker. So a little bit on the small side, about 20,000 tons, 17 years old. Uh, the ship was built in Japan and we're going to get into details of ownership and, uh, who is managing this vessel in a moment. This is the route the vessel took per marine traffic. You'll see it sailing out of Malaysia and then entering into the region of the Gulf of Aden through the Bab el-Mandab and then into the Red Sea. So this is marine traffic showing you the passage from the Gulf of Aden through the Bab el-Mandab. The narrow channel here is only about 10 miles wide, but in truth, the area that they have to navigate in, which is this narrow little channel here, is, is only a few miles wide. So ships really have to go through this, this, this snake of a passage to get into the Bab el-Mandab. And this is the Stratina. Uh, you see her here sailing at about 11, 12 knots, fairly typical for a tanker heading northbound. Fast forward a little bit and take you to this time period right here. So this is 11 December, right around 1947 UTC, Greenwich Mean Time. Here's the port of Al Muka off the coast of Yemen. Here comes uh, Stradina coming up, about 12.7 knots. Uh, you'll see the ship veer out of course here a little bit, and then all of a sudden you'll see the ship take a slowdown. And that's probably the moment when it was struck by the cruise missile. So the missile probably launched from land side here, stuck to Stradina probably on the starboard side, we'll assume, since it was heading northbound at the time. And what you see is the ship come to a near stop here. That's probably the crew assessing the position or assessing the damage of the vessel. But then the vessel very quickly gets underway and departs out of the area at almost 10 knots. So this is the statement by the operating company regarding the vessel a press release on December 12th at 121. While at, the, at sea in the Red Sea off Yemen, the motor vessel, motor tanker Stradina was hit by a missile last night, 11th of December. The vessel was carrying a cargo of biofuel feedstock from Southeast Asia to Italy. We know they're going to Venice. Fortunately, there were no injuries to any member of the Indian crew who managed to extinguish the fire. The crew and ship were assisted by the U.S. and French Navy and brought to safety and are still under protection by naval forces. Our focus has been and remains the safety and well-being of the seafarers on board. There is no Israeli link to the ownership or the management of the vessel. She was, however, tentatively nominated by her charterers for a cargo out of Ashdod in January. Ashdod is the second largest port in Israel behind uh, Haifa. 
The contract was entered into three weeks ago, subject to no further escalations in the area. Owners had an option to cancel the contract if such a worsening of the situation would take place. So ship was probably going to load some sort of chemical oil refined products and sail it from somewhere in the Mediterranean over to Israel. The final statement here, upon the recommendation of our security advisors, it was decided to withhold this information until the vessel and the crew were in safe waters. So when this ship went through the Bab el-Mandab, it did note on board that they had an armed security detachment on board. So they had armed guards on board this vessel. But armed guards are are meant to deter borders, pirates, not to fight off an anti-ship missile. I should note that the port of Ashdod had listed this vessel coming in in January. Now, since then, the port of Ashdod's arrival schedule has been taken down. As a matter of fact, you can't access the port at all from outside of Israel. So you won't be able to get intel from that anymore. So it appears that the Houthi determined that this vessel was going to go to Israel at some point, wasn't even heading there immediately, wasn't coming from Israel, but this is a ship in the future was going to go there. And the Houthi targeted the vessel, struck the vessel. Going on here, this is the statement from the Yemen military. The naval forces of the Yemeni armed forces carried out a qualitative military operation against the Norwegian ship Astrinda. You'll see that uh, phrase there. Sometimes they list the ship as Astrinda or Strinda, which was loaded with oil and headed to the Israel entity. Okay, the ship was not heading to Israel. It was heading to Venice, Italy, a much different place. Over the past two days, the Yemeni armed forces succeeded in preventing the passage of several ships. Several ships have diverted around. These are ships that have direct Israeli ownership, parts of Zim lines or other associated Israeli companies. We've seen about two dozen vessels divert around. They responded to the warnings of the Yemeni naval forces and did not resort to targeting the Norwegian ship loaded with oil until its crew rejected all warning calls. So obviously Yemen was calling to the Stradina, but we don't have any evidence about that. Uh, Again, U.S. and allied naval ships of CTF-153, that is the assigned task force to patrol this area, were not in and around the area to provide assistance. The Yemeni armed forces will not hesitate to target any ship that violates what was stated in the previous statement. So a pretty emphatic call here by the Yemen military that they are going to continue this conflict. This is from Equus. This shows you both the owners and operators of the vessel. So right here, Hansa Tankers is the ship manager of the vessel. The uh, in, individual ship manager is Diamond Ship Manager Management, and the registered owner is Moenickel Chemical Tankers AS. This is out of Norway. So you have a Norwegian tanker with an Indian crew sailing from Malaysia to Italy and with a potential stop later on in Israel, was attacked by Yemen because it had, quote-unquote, attachments to the Israeli entity. This has huge implications for attacking more ships on the high seas. If you go back and look how this has escalated, a quick little history of where we were back in November, this all started when the Houthi boarded the motor vessel Galaxy Leader, an empty car carrier sailing from uh, Europe Uh, Turkey specifically, over to India. They boarded this vessel from an MI-17 helicopter, seized the vessel, and have since taken the ship into Yemen waters. They are holding the 25-member crew, mixed crew. This ship was under charter to NYK line. Uh, It was uh, a subsidiary of the operating company, was attached to ray carriers uh, of Tel Aviv, hence the reason for the target of this vessel. Then you saw the further escalation, U.S. Navy destroyer tanker targeted by ballistic missiles off the Yemeni coast. This is where we saw USS Mason and the tanker Central Park uh, come under fire. Uh, There was missiles launched at it. Later on, when the Central Park got out of the Bab el-Mandeb into the Gulf of Aden, heading toward the Indian Ocean, they were boarded by a five-person team. That five-person team was unable to take the ship. The ship's crew hunkered themselves down in a secure facility. They turned the engines off. They, They basically let the ship drift. They locked themselves in basically a safe room on the vessel, called for distress, and waited until USS Mason sent a boarding team on board. The five pirates, hijackers, whatever you want to call them, 
exited the vessel. They sailed north toward Yemen. The five were, were, were captured, brought on the Mason, determined to be of Somali origin, but these are not Somali pirates. They're operating out of Yemen for the Houthi. This statement, December 9th, Yemen's Houthi warned they will target all ships heading to Israel. We just did the video on this the other day where we talked about this. This is the call that the Houthi are putting out there that they are blockading Israel. And understand, this is in violation of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea of Free Transits. While the Bab el-Mandab may be within the territorial waters of Yemen and Djibouti, there is something called free passage. You do not have the right to obstruct free passage of ships. And Yemen has no authority to initiate a blockade. Plus, the Houthi are not the recognized government of Yemen. The, Yemen has been involved in the civil war for a long time. With, Ye with the Houthi backed by Iran and the other government backed by Saudi Arabia. So you've got a proxy cold war going on at the southern, southwestern tip of the Arabian Peninsula. And you have this multiple commercial vessels attacked in the Red Sea. This is where we saw the attack on three separate vessels in the Red Sea, where the USS Kearney outdid itself in performing operations to shoot down missiles, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and drones heading that way. Subsequently, we saw a French vessel do the same exact thing. And now you have other nations getting involved. Here on December 6th, Saudi Arabia urges U.S. restraint as Houthis attack ships in the Red Sea. So the Saudis don't want in intervention into this region, obviously because they are backing the rival government of the Houthis. They, they really don't want to make the U.S. and the Western allies look like they're on the side of Saudi Arabia if they come in and smack the Houthis down. And then this White House aide says Iran, Iran helping plan and execute Red Sea shipping attacks, which goes down as the most obvious statement said by a White House aide in a long friggin' time. No crap that the Iran is helping them. We know this is being done. Iran actually has a base ship at the very southern end of the Red Sea that's probably relaying targeting information and ship positions to the Houthi. Uh, there was also a statement by the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, talking about we should stand up an international naval task force. Well, Jake, guess what? You and Admiral Grady, the vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, should really talk to the U.S. Central Command, 5th Fleet, CTF-153, Captain Coles, because he has already stood up a naval task force to do this. Uh, CTF-153 has been up in operation since 2022. And we go to my one of my favorite movies of all time, The Hunt for Red October. This business will get out of control and we'll be lucky to live through it. We're seeing a massive escalation of issues here in and around the Red Sea, the Bab el-Mandab, and the Gulf of Aden. Now, let me be clear about a couple of things. Number one, this ship, the Stradina, was hit by a cruise missile. While my friends and military associates love to talk about the impact and power of naval weaponry, while a cruise missile can do a lot of bad things to a warship, to a 20,000 ton tanker loaded with heavy oil, mm, you're not going to do that much to it. Uh, they are pretty resilient. Uh, you have to hit them a couple of times, start a fire, and really cause a lot of damage to uh, really uh, knock a vessel like that out. Uh, they're pretty resilient. And understand, the Stradina is a very small tanker. 20,000 tons, that's a tiny tanker. Uh, you're talking about 100 to 200,000 uh, ton tankers out there. Same thing with container ships and car carriers. Uh, commercial ships can take hits. However, that doesn't mean that they cannot be sunk, cannot be lost by fires. So this is a dangerous situation. What we're seeing right now is an escalation in threats to shipping. You're talking about, so far, a grand total of about five ships have been targeted out of 17,000 that yearly sail through the Bab el-Mandab. This is a very small percentage of the overall ships going through. A lot of people want to talk about this idea that ships are going to start diverting around, that this is going to cause Egypt to lose money in the Suez Canal. Let me tell you a little bit something about commercial shipping. Number one, the ship owners don't give a crap. They don't. Their bottom line is money. That's it. And that's all they care about is the issue of money. And if they are making profits and money, they will keep sailing the ships into harm's way. Will they have to pay a little bit more for insurance? Yeah, we already talked about that. We've seen insurance rates go from 0.03% of the ship up to 0.05, maybe up to 0.1%. But that is tens of thousands of dollars. If you divert around Africa, 
Uh, that can, yeah, save you a Suez Canal transit of four to seven hundred thousand dollars. But you're adding time, and time is the issue here because if you lose one voyage over a year, that's millions of dollars. And they're going to keep taking the risk to go through the Bab el Mandab. They'll turn off their AIS. They're going to put armed guards on board, but they're going to keep trucking through. Now, Israeli ships with Israeli connections will probably divert because the Israeli Navy doesn't have the capability to deploy down to that region. It's a thousand miles down the Red Sea. The Israeli Navy is largely a coastal navy. It's got corvettes, uh, no long distance. They don't have supply ships. They can put together a task force and potentially send it down there. But the problem is they're very small ships with short endurance. They have submarines, but submarines don't help you against anti-ship missiles and helicopters boarding vessels. What you need is a massive naval presence. As I mentioned to you the other day, the United States is not going to start running convoys through. You're, you're not going to run convoys. This is not the tanker war of 1987-88, where the U.S. reflagged ships and ran convoys of U.S. ships through. Ships are going to be running through the Bob El Mandeb every minute, running through. You're not going to stop in convoy because that causes ships to pile up and then pulse through and it creates delays and delays mean money and shipping companies are not going to miss their windows to get to the, through the Suez Canal and on ports and berths so they're going to keep moving and the only time this is going to change if you see a massive loss of life a massive loss of shipping money or a massive environmental damage that's being done but right now, what you see is the U.S., the French Navy, and perhaps some other navies that are arriving on the scene are going to be reactive and not proactive. Uh, it appears the Biden administration, and along with the Saudis, don't want anyone hitting the Houthis in Yemen. You're not going to talk about land hitting. And the problem is this strait is so friggin' narrow that it's almost impossible to put a destroyer between or a warship between every commercial ship and the Yemen coast. Uh, it's too close. There's too long of a coastline. You would need a massive presence of warships that would basically be every couple of miles wrapped around Yemen. And that's just not going to happen. So as long as there's no effort being made here to stop the Houthis from launching missiles, we're going to keep seeing these things happen. And how long can this go on for? Tanker war in Iran and Iraq went from 1980 to 1988. Hundreds of ships were hit. Thousands of you know, millions of dollars worth of damage was done. Hundreds were killed and wounded. And really nobody intervened in that at all. So the prospects here are not really great for this. I know a lot of people are calling for action. They want the U.S. Navy to go in, land the Marines, and 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 hit these areas. But these missile launchers are mobile. They'll be, they'll be moved around. Very hard to target. And again, we don't know who the who they are going to hit at because their information is not great. They just seem to find some ship that's related in some way they think to the Israelis and fire and forget. And that makes it almost impossible to stop it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You can hit that super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly, yearly subscriber. I appreciate all the follows. Got a lot of hits on that last video I did. Please share it around your social media platform of choice. And until our next video, this is Sal signing off.